The world of Soma is a place where threats lurk behind every corner. Pestilence knows how to throw these threats at villagers and has in mind to kill at least three of them before his time is up. The villagers depend on the skills of the apothecary, a wise and learned master of defense against dark powers of pestilence. The apothecary will need to wield the healing blades of his large cabinet of antibiotics. But beware! There are many different types of antibiotics and some will only work against specific plagues. To make matters worse, the more antibiotics are used, the more resistance emerges. These are the ingredients of the card battle game, Defenders of Soma. Hello, welcome to Transmissible Briefs, episode 9. Today we'll pay attention to a fantasy battle card game between antibiotics and infectious bacteria. Defenders of Soma is designed and developed by Nerdcore Medical, a company producing games and study aids for medicine. If you are a fan of games or just love creative teaching tools, then this podcast may be interesting for you to complete. To play the game, you need no medical knowledge. It is designed for players who appreciate complex scenarios and difficult choices. Besides that, it can also serve as a tool for learning, and that is a reason to take it as our topic today. Being an asymmetrical card game, Defenders of Soma plays a little like Android Netrunner or Star Wars the card game. This means one player is the aggressor and the other player reacts. Instead of talking about the rules, let me show you. Here is an overview of how the card game is played. First, understand the layout of the battlefield. A village with a modest population is in the middle of the board. At any given time, three villagers are exposed to possible pestilences. Bacterial threats are never far away. Look, here are the provoker organisms, close at hand of the pestilence player. These are pathogens such as Campylobacter or Gonorrhea. And of course, there is Shigella. All traits of the bacteria are described on the card. For example, here you see the extra profession of this provoker. This Shigella is also a thief, which means she will steal one of the defense cards of the apothecary. And perhaps this stolen antibiotic defense card was just the only working antibiotic in the apothecary's hand. So how do we know what antibiotic works against Shigella? Well, if you're a medical student or a microbiologist, you should know. For everyone else, the Provoker card will tell you. In the colored banners at the lower half of the card, you will see in which of the eight groups of antibiotics you can find a treatment working against regular Shigella. So let's hope that the apothecary has at least one of those in his hand. And wait, there's something more. There's something else with this card. Shigella has a revenge up her sleeve. If this Shigella is treated successfully with one of the antibiotics, the pestilence player does not have to discard her. Instead, he will let this Shigella evolve to a resistant one which can be used later in the game to attack other villagers. In addition to the provoker organisms, there are opportunists. These are bacteria that cannot attack healthy villagers, but only the weak and the wounded ones. Here is an example. Look at this Acinetobacter baumani. The blood drop indicates the opportunistic trait, and the plus sign means that this opportunist can be added on top of another infection. And this Acinetobacter is an escape artist. It means it takes two antibiotics from different groups to kill this plague, not one. Most villagers start out healthy. This means they can only be attacked by provoker cards. But if successful, they will become wounded. And a wounded villager is vulnerable to opportunists. The apothecary player holds a hand with eight antibiotics. These are drawn from a random stack in his cabinet. And each time the apothecary treats a villager successfully with an antibiotic, then the pestilence player removes one of the locks that is blocking the resistance card. Once all the locks are removed from a single card, then this resistance will be available to block future defenses. It is like real life. The more often you use an antibiotic, the higher the chance that resistance emerges. Now each round starts with taking one coin from the turn counter. 
and this is moved to the purse of the apothecary. The apothecary can use the money to pay for expensive treatments or to do research. The next step in the round is when Pestilence attacks up to three exposed villagers, and then the apothecary plays the defenses that may work, and then the result is assessed. If healthy villagers are attacked successfully, their cards are turned, so they become wounded, and then you will see another effect taking part of the game, and each wounded villager has their own effect. If wounded villagers are attacked successfully, then they are killed, and killed villagers are replaced by new healthy ones. Then the next round is up. If Pestilence kills three villagers before all rounds are played, then Pestilence wins the game. Otherwise, Apothecary is the winner. That is basically how this game is played. In addition to the basic rules, there are elements to make the game even more exciting. Provokers and opportunists have the ability to transform into mutants and under the right circumstances. And then there's also the final bosses. The Apothecary can use very powerful antibiotics. However, these are also quite expensive. Sounds like real life? Good! If you want to know more about the work of Nerdcore Medical, surf to the URL. They publish medical themed study aids for students. What to think of a beautifully designed flowchart of virus families? Or want to identify and classify bacteria? My personal favorite is the basic guide to important concepts in immunology. And if you want to find unique and playful gifts, Nerdcore Medical has many designed to raise awareness about public health. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. We'll come back soon with transmissible briefs or more public health news.